The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We have Stan, the man, Harley, of the Harley Stock Market Letter. Today at 9.30, I know you folks will be glad to hear what he has to say. He's certainly been spot on in both the bond and the stock markets and pretty much on gold, too. Well, the first chart we're going to look at today is what we usually look at, and that is the German DAX over the past 10 days. As you can see, we had a very, very large rally yesterday continuing into today. In fact, actually, it started today. Uh, you'll notice that uh, today is the 19th, and we had a nice move from from uh, 131.60 all the way up to 133.70, and uh, that completed an ABCD, as you can see here, and we cleaned out all of that congestion, you know, right up at the 1.27 level, if that uh, is going to, you know, hold the market. If we look at the DAX index on a little bit longer time scale, which is, of course, the weekly, we'll bring this up and you'll be able to see it here. We're completing a butterfly pattern up here uh, at the uh, 1.618 expansion, and that's at uh, 13,400. And I think the high today so far has been 13,350, as I recall. Uh, that has not made a new high uh, on the, uh, it hasn't made a new high in a year, of course, but uh, not a new all time high. The all time high is up around 13,600, which it could be there by the time we finish this segment of our show because the markets are moving pretty good. Well, well, today, oh, someone asked a question from what I was talking about, the description of the book, The Man Who Solved the Markets, a story of Jim Simmons from Renaissance Capital. What my big takeaways from that book was, personally, uh, one was the fact that he really was into geometry and uh, going back to looking at the Babylonians and stuff. These are all the things of sacred geometry that we look at here. And if you do that, and, he, and he, the name of his yacht, 220 foot, now that's a little bigger than Tom's, uh, was Archimedes. And of course, we all know who Archimedes was. He's the guy in the bathtub that says, Eureka, I found it, when he understand the buoyancy of gold. Well, let's move on and uh, talk just a little bit more about that book. A second takeaway that I got, and this was very, very important, it really reminded me of history and stuff, is that he said in 1989, and remember, he struggled from 1980 through 1989. He really didn't start making money until 1989, and then he started doing it, you know, forever. <laughs> well, the last 30 years anyway. But uh, he said that they bought a MIPS computer, and that was the difference. A MIPS computer is M-I-P-S. That means millions of integers per second. And uh, they, he bought that, and that, that searches for patterns. And we, uh, we bought ours in 1992. And uh, that little machine sat in the office there in Pismo Beach and ran constantly for four years until it finally died, and we thought we'd got everything out of it, which I'm sure we thought we did, and I think we did. But that, that little computer uh uh, you know, it, remember the computing power back then, the computing power back now was a lot different. You could probably put it on a wristwatch today, but uh, it ran uh, 24 hours a day. It had to be repaired a couple times over the years. But Twentyman reminded me that we paid a lot more than six thousand dollars for it. He thought we paid more than ten, but you know, I, I was I was going through I was burning burning money at the time, so I I don't remember what it was because uh, anyway, it, it basically what it does it it searches for patterns. And that was one of the things that Dennis Regan, the guy who worked on this thing originally, and of course he died, you know, leaving us uh, nothing. And but the idea of of looking at the MIPS computer was something that yeah, and it works part of the time, folks. I mean, at least the one that I have. I mean, it's not uh, it's far from perfect. But remember. Jim Simmons is only right 50.75% of the time, 50-50 coin toss. But he says that 50.75, I'm a 100% uh, 
in that trade, and that's where he pushes the he pushes the limits, and that's pretty much what we see when we read Tom Hugard's book uh, about how he trades and, and try to catch those trends. Today, for the first time. In a, in a long time, we have got a uh, pattern that we don't see very often it, in one of the markets that we're looking at that signals there's a possible top today. Uh, we haven't seen, I mean, I'm looking at the ratios and they've kept going up and up and up, but uh, this is the first time we've seen a pattern that actually uh, did that. So if the market does start down today, it might mean something. But again, if it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything anyway. Someday it'll go down, but maybe not in my lifetime, but who knows. All right, the next one we want to take a look at here is the footsie because we've got Mr. Johnson and these guys are over there fighting and everything just like they all are, always are. And so I just brought this uh, uh, one hour chart. You can see we're up at the 78% retracement. Nice little ABCD pattern there. And you can see the other ABCD patterns that are here. If you look at the left side, you can see the really nice uh, uh, triple top there, head and shoulders pattern. Just absolutely really nice. And then the very top, you notice that's a nothing more than an ABCD pattern from the 27th Second, and as uh, Mr. Twentyman says, defy human nature. Do the work yourself. So pay close attention to that. That's very, very important. Now, yesterday we had a nice bottom in the gold down at that uh, 1458 uh, level. The low was 1456.70. We rallied $20 an ounce, and now we backed off about $8 an ounce, a little more. I think we came down $11 an ounce. That's about the most you're going to get if uh, if the market's really good. So as long as the gold, uh, and the reason why we say 11, folks, is that remember the half of the harmonic number in gold, which is $17, the harmonic number is 34. Half of that 17, the 61% retracement of that is 11. So any move beyond 11, below 1465, would tell us, uh-oh, something's wrong in River City. So you have to be very, very careful. And that's the main thing that you want to focus on as you're looking at that. Now, we are going to talk just a little, well, let's get back up here and we will uh, talk just a second here. Let's, well, they, someone's asking about the gold. Let's get this up here because this is this is from yesterday when we, we, we were looking at. You'll notice the 61% retracement came in there. Uh, we had a nice rally. Remember, the, the rally went all the way up to 1476. You see that high that up there? It matched that rally. So it had a $20 rally. hadn't it hadn't gone above it. So that's a sign that it is not uh, not broken out yet. Right now we're trading at around 1467. The overnight low was 14. Uh, uh, 65 and change. So it's still holding that area, but we really need it to get above 1476 to keep the ball rolling uh, on the bullish side. So that's what we're keeping an eye on here early this morning. And let's, if you have any questions, folks, it's 877 927 6648. When we get back from this next break, we are going to dissect some natural gas and take a look at it to see what it's going to do next because we're at some serious uh, numbers here pretty soon, and we want to watch that very closely. So keep that in mind that the next thing we'll be talking about will be natural gas. If you have any questions, you know, please give us a call, 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we're back, and we're going to be talking here just a little bit about the natural gas that we brought up here. You'll notice, folks, uh, a week ago, we were up at that 78% level, uh, excuse me, 38% uh, level on a long-term weekly chart up there at that uh, 290 level. And the important thing there is you notice that we stayed there for five days, folks. That's a weekly reversal. And then we gapped down. You know, that was on the last uh, Thursday, I believe. Then we rallied back, and the rally back was almost exactly 38%. And now we're heading down. We're lower again today. We're looking at a price of 239 in the uh, natural gas, and we're trading at around 252 right now, I believe. But that's where you would probably take a look at it because that's going to be a 61% retracement of the low on October the 14th. It will also be a 50% retracement from the low on August the 5th. Plus, you'll have an ABCD pattern there. There's one other factor that's there that you should pay really close attention to. And if you believe in harmony, and this is what Jim Simmons does, <laughs> this is the kind of work that he works with is if you notice the high that we made there on September the 13th when we had the full moon, we came straight down. Yes, and he does use lunar cycles. And uh, it came straight down into October the uh, 13th, the 13th, another full moon. You notice that uh, that move is going to be exactly equal if we get to 239. Now, if you don't believe that, what you should do is defy human nature and do the work yourself because it'd be right there in front of you, and they would tell you, gee whiz, at that spot, it's going to be looking pretty good. And there's one other pattern there that we really should pay attention to that we got from Roy Longstreet and his fine son, Bill. That would also be a one, three, five pattern with August 5th being a one, August the 10th being a three, and it looks like the 25th of uh, November. And I, I, you know, hey, I just put that in there. I didn't do any cycle work. I just, you know, that's just the red line, uh, Thunderbolt line, ABCD from the Ensign software, you know, making it down to that level. So that would be a one, three, five pattern. It might not come in until it might, it might only make 246. I don't know, 247. 
seven. We don't know that, but at least the pattern is forming, and uh, you know we'll see if that's going uh, to be the case. I hope that helps in the analysis of what we're looking at here when we're watching uh, these uh, markets uh, unfold. I wanted to share with you uh, one other chart that we got from uh, uh, the El Elliott Wave folks, and this is about uh, someone asked a question about the market and the Federal Reserve, you know, who runs what. And if we bring this up here to take a look at it. Now, this is coming from the Associate Economics Institute, which is part of the Elliott Wave. Uh, we will take a look at Christmas corn for you, Bob, in just a second here. You'll notice here that the actually, it's, it's the real market is what really runs the thing. And uh, this is going through 2018. This year is not in, but uh, you'll notice that uh, the Fed re Federal Reserve reacts to what the market is actually doing. And right now, we've had a nice small rally in the bonds and notes, which that is about all we're expecting, folks, because that bond and note market is in big trouble. It, it really has a, a really good possibility for breaking. And if you look at um, this is um, this one second here, I think this is what we want to be looking at. This is a this is a chart just showing you where we are with the debt market uh, in, in, in compared to other times. You can see the credit cycle peak in 1990, the credit cycle peak in 2000, that was the dot-com bubble. See the credit side people in 2008, that was the housing, and look where we are right now. Now, uh, anybody that's seen that pattern, you can see the ABCD structure in this. And believe me, when you're dealing with numbers like this, these patterns are, you know, they, they don't change very much. This comes from Haver Analytics, which is Gulf from Stats, so we'll be able to see. Hey, we've got uh, Paul from Henderson, Nevada, back on the line. Paul, how are you today? I'm doing good. How are you today, Larry? How am I lucky enough to get you twice in one week, my friend? I really appreciate that. What can I do for you? Hey, um, no, I really love the show. I listen every day. Um, I think you have some outstanding information. I'm taking a look at CGC here, and I'm just curious, on the long-term daily, is there any ratios that you see? Um, I've been shorting this thing uh, quite a lot, day trading. And, is that, um, is that I want Chipotle? To find it at some point. I'm just curious if you see anything. Is that Chipotle? Is that the name of the stock? Because I, I don't, I don't see it here anywhere. You say it's CGC. Um, I don't see that anywhere. Uh, I'll, let me, let me bring it in. I'll try to get the data working right now, Paul. See if I can get it. CGC, and they'll just get this up here to see if we can add it and take a quick look at it. If you're kind enough to. Uh, call in, I'll be, uh-oh, this is not a good sign. Oh, dear. Folks, I'm switching data, and believe me, you, you don't want to be around me when I'm switching data, because <laughs> it's it's not a fun thing to uh, it's not a fun thing to see. Hold on a second. We'll get this CGC up here if we can. Yeah, did we make it or not? Uh, CGC, CGC. Yep, there it is. We did get it. Now, hopefully, there'll be data coming in, whether it is or not. We do have data coming in. One second here. Get this up here. Uh, all righty. Here's where we are. Wow. This thing's heading into the sewer. I wouldn't – I'd stay short. If you're short this, this thing's uh, – I don't see any reason to get out of this. I mean, it's uh, it's it's down now. This is this stock is in big trouble. Whatever this thing is. Oh, on the long term, hold it. Long term, we got to pay attention here. Let's just take a look at the last low we had way back in 2017. You even go. Oh, this thing's a. Oh, this has got skull and crossbones on it, uh, Paul. Let's bring this up and show the folks. Here's where uh, take a look at it. Uh, we we gap we gap down below the 78% uh, level at 17. This stock uh, it, it looks like it's going to six. Paul, uh, there's an ABCD there that's completing. I see that, but gapping down like that below the 78% level, what I would do if I was short that stock, I'd put my stop at 16 and a half, and let it rip because it looks to me like we're heading down to six. I hope that helps, but that's not a very bullish sign when you gap below those major ratios. That's uh, the ABCD structure on this measured to 18, and we're already $4 below that. So this stock's going a great deal lower, in my opinion. There doesn't seem to be uh, uh, any help in it right now. So those are just a few of the ones that we're keeping an eye on this morning. I hope that helps.
So thank you for calling in. We really appreciate it. And uh, I guess Paul hung up. Let's move on to the next one that we want to talk about here. And that is, folks, one of the things that uh, we focused on in the newsletter this past week where there were two things that looked really interesting. One was the gold, of course, that turned out to be pretty good. And the other one was the, the crude oil market. That was also another one that uh, that worked out to be uh, pretty nice. And we'll get this up here. I just wanted to explain to you what I did in the video and in the, uh, the charts that I sent out to the subscribers is you'll notice that we had a potential for the crude oil to get to 58.79. That was a 61% retracement. But the real key to this was Friday's action. As you can see here, on Friday's action, we took out the highs of the last two weeks at uh, 58. Uh, the high was, I think, oh, we'll be right back, 877-927 with Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey, folks, uh, two announcements. Uh, first, the most important one is tonight at uh, 5 to 6.30 Eastern Time, Basil Chapman will be doing his annual review. It's a comprehensive review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook. 
for 220 or for 2020, and I, I highly recommend you uh, watch that because this guy really knows what he's talking about. Comes with a money back guarantee, so you really just for new subscribers, so you just can't you just can't pass it up. But with the things going on here, uh, he's very very good at what he does, and uh, I, I think you'll enjoy it very very much. Uh, the second thing in is next week. Next week from the 25th through the whole week of the 29th, which is going to be a shortened week. The old cowboy is going to take the whole week off for R&R, &R, rest and recuperation. I never trade on Thursday or Friday anyway, and Wednesday's short, so I might as well take the time to uh, do some family things that we want to get done. So you will be probably entertained by somebody else at that time. Unfortunately, today, we're not able to get Stan Harley out uh, because he had something that was very, very urgent, and I'm probably related to the market, but maybe not. But anyway, that's one of the things that uh, we won't be able to do today is to listen to Stan. Now, we do have a question here about the Bitcoin, and as you can see here, we'll get this chart up. Oh, um, I knew the answer to that, uh, uh, David, but I, I guessed wrong. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, get that up here. Uh, you know, here's a, the chart of the Bitcoin. Uh, you know, we had that really strong rally, and then we've come back, and we've given back 78% of it, folks. That's not a good sign for Bitcoin. It must hold that 8,000 level. We're trading at 8,120 right now, and below 8,000 means that 786 is broken. And then you're going to be looking at a bigger ABCD for the last several months, taking you down to about 6,500. And that's not a very good sign from the bulls if uh, that's what happening to that. Here again, you see that big rally that we had there was caused by Premier, Premier Chi saying that, uh, you know, they were going heavily into blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies, and everybody bought into it like they usually do when they watch the news. And of course, the market said, uh oh, maybe that's not what is going to happen. So we'll be able to see. By the way, this is the 13th day in a row that we made higher highs or closed higher in the Dow Jones. That's a, that's a very, very unusual, uh, very, very unusual event. But uh, that is neither here nor there. Okay, the next one I would like to uh, just go over uh, one more time. And let's get that up here to take a quick look at it here is the, oh, where is it, where is it, where is it? Here's the euro, there we go. Here's where we are with the euro. Get this up here, take a look at it. Now, after the euro, Let's get this here so we can see it. After the euro made the 61% uh, retracement down there at 109.95, we had a nice rally. We got up to 110.85, rallied 80 pips. And those of you that look at the things with harmonic numbers, that's within 10 pips of the exact harmonic number in the euro. And uh, now we backed off. We're still we're still trading up there, though, folks. We're still holding very nicely. So that tells us that bottom that we made. Uh, on Friday was a very, very important bottom. So we don't want to lose lose uh, lo lose that fact. That's uh, something that I think we really need to uh, pay uh, close attention to. If you have any questions, folks, it's 877-927-6648. And I want to get one other th thing here to uh, cover something. Hold on one second here. Uh, where is it? There we go. This is our pattern here that we've been waiting for for quite some time uh, in the soybean market. We'll get this up here, and then we're going to cover one other one that's really important today because we are banging on death's door in the old hog market. Here's the smart soybean, folks. I, I marked those two red boxes because that means the market stood up there, a lot of distribution, and then you see what happened. We got the ABCD coming down about another 12 to 15 cents. Beans are up about 3 cents today, but hasn't really fulfill that pattern, so I don't think you can uh, get to it. So we'll have to uh, pay close. Hey, we got Stan on the line now. Stan, how are you? I uh, hope he's on the line. We'll see. Uh, Broadsword to Danny Boy. Broadsword to Danny Boy. Come in, Stan Harley. The chicken is in the pot. The eagle has landed. It doesn't seem to be clear here. Hey, 10-4, 10-4. How are you doing, my friend? 
just just doing awesome here. You know, we're going to get a major uh, dump X of rain here up in, here in Arizona here starting late today. Yeah, I, I, I saw the saw the reports. Uh, it was really, really quite ominous is what they're saying, which is unusual for us to get it in November. But, you know, we'll take anything we it can is. get for sure. Stan, we have a question from one of our listeners from last time you were on. And you mentioned uh, the fact that you were still very, very bullish, the bonds. He wanted to know why. And the sequel to that was uh, your opinion on gold. That That's how he started. So I think, uh, you know, that's maybe to start out with the questions with we'll see what's going on. Well, uh, yeah, I think uh, longer term, I think the bonds are poised to head higher. Uh, we're doing a little chop shop right now. Uh, back in the area of the highs from uh, 2017. And uh, I think we'll do some back and fill structure here. But by and large, I think uh, bonds are probably going to head higher. Could possibly pull back and tag the uh, the 200-week uh, uh, and or the 50-week moving average. That's certainly possible. Uh, that's on the 30-year bond. But uh, beyond that, I think bonds will probably head higher. Uh, over to the precious metals, um, I think we've probably seen a significant high there. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a cycle that averages about 80 weeks uh, on the weekly chart and then on the monthly chart about 94 months. I think uh, both of those uh, came together here a couple of months ago, uh -huh. and I, I think the metals are probably done for a while, and they're probably going to head south. Okay. Well, Stan, you have been incredibly bullish on the stock market and has certainly paid dividends. It uh, looks like we're continuing to go higher. Uh, you, you, you had some, some something in 2020 you, that you were looking at that might bring a correction of uh, half a day or something? <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 are you, what are you looking at in the market right now, Stan? I shouldn't joke around because you've been so doggone accurate, but go ahead. Uh, uh, Larry, I've been focused on this pattern I call the rule of four. Uh, it's something that W.D. Gann found about 100 years ago. It's a, a rare but uh, very reliable pattern. And what he said was uh, as the market uh, moves up to some area of resistance, that resistance can be horizontal. It can be upward sloping, sloping. It can even be downward sloping, although that's rare. Um, but the point is, the the first three stabs at that resistance level result in failure, and uh, the fourth attempt is uh, make or break time. And uh, the fourth time, if it fails to punch through that resistance line, then you get a pretty sharp uh, swoon to the downside. On the other hand, if the market breaks through on that fourth attempt and breaks through to the upside then you get a tremendous move uh, on, on the upside. And I believe that's what's developing right now, Larry. Um, oh, we yes, had, yeah. yeah we we had this, uh, you look at the Dow or the S&P charts, you, you got a modestly upward sloping line with the highs of January 2018, September, October 2018, and again, of J July of this year. Uh, this is the fourth push, and we've broken through. And I think the gains on the upside are going to astound a lot of people. I think we're going to rock and roll significantly to the upside. Okay. Stan, can you stay with us a little bit longer? I want to talk to you about the foundation. Absolutely. Okay. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, we're back talking with Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter. Stan, you know that the foundation for the study of cycles has been revived. Are you aware of that? I am, yes, uh, Larry. Okay. Yeah, Richard Smith is going to be taking it over. I spoke with him uh, last week. He's going to be a guest here on the show, uh, you know, pretty good. I, I actually went to Pittsburgh and met Edwin Dewey, you know, way, way back in the late 60s, well, 69, I believe. And, of course, I, I communicated quite a bit with Gertrude Shirk over the years. But uh, I was glad to see that. They've got some wonderful research. And they've got a lot of astrological research, too, that they've never shared with many people. But I understand they're going to bring out some great products. So... We'll see that fellow that was uh, running it, David Peralta. He uh, he died very unexpectedly. Are you aware of that? He I mean, did. He just, yes. Yeah. He, yes, he did about a year ago. He unexpectedly passed away. Yes. David you Peralta. Know, you know, you, did you know the Do you know the uh, cause of death or anything? Was it Was it uh, accidental or was it uh, mysterious or? Uh, you know, yeah, you Larry, know I. About? I, okay. I I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't, either. don't know. You know what? As my grandma said, if you don't know, it's none of your business. So let's just leave that <laughs> out, of the, out of the equation. Uh, we've talked about the gold interest rates and the stock market. Are there any other markets that you look at? Do you look at ETFs at all uh, when, you're, when you're doing your work, Stan? Well, I, I'm a broad market index kind of guy. So my, my personal inclination is to trade the ETFs that, uh, that mirror the S&P 500, either long or short. Okay, and then the bonds, and why, the TLT, TBT, that type yeah, of thing. Okay. Exactly, yes. Yeah, I trade the TLT yeah. for the bonds. Yeah, that's my, my uh, ETF for the bonds. I also look at the home home price market, the case Shiller series of home price indices. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, they seem um, to be going up in your area, that's for sure. <laughs> well, they seem to be going up uh, all over the country. Uh, yeah. I look at the national index, and I look at regional indices, and the, uh, the national index uh, just hit a new all-time high. Uh, wow. And and I look for home prices to continue their march uh, northbound. Uh, we got a very favorable economy right now, low interest rates, and from a technical analysis perspective, I, I could see that market just continuing to head higher. Well, that's good. Hey, Stan, I'm going to let you go now because I know you're really busy, but we'll have you on again soon. I want to wish you and your bride a very, very happy Thanksgiving, and we'll have you on long before Christmas, of course. But uh, hopefully over the holidays, if we get up there, I'll introduce you to Sarah, and we could meet and uh, say hello after, what, 35 years or so? <laughs> Absolutely. I look yeah. forward to it, Larry. My okay. pleasure. Yeah. 
You bet. Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter, folks. It's easy. Just go online and you just Google it and you'll be able to see it. He's always in the rankings, folks. He's one of the guests that we have here, along with Kerry Szymanski, Tim Boss, Steve Rhodes. We can't forget Steve. My goodness, he's in there uh, right at the top or right near the top all the time. So uh, we're very fortunate to have some really smart people. And, and speaking of smart people, folks, we will have Tim Bost from the Financial Cycles Weekly uh, on the show tomorrow and should be very interesting because we have the planet Mercury going direct station tomorrow. So uh, that's usually pretty good because uh, Mercury is the planet of communication and uh, things are a little better when Mercury is in uh, stand, uh, standard, uh, standard uh, direction. Anyway, let's move on to take a couple of looks at a few of the other markets that we want to be watching. Uh, one of the ones that was in the news today was the emerging market, and I wanted to uh, bring this up. This is the weekly chart that you have here. You, uh, you'll be able to see here that we have this uh, – uh, emerging market uh, ETF. There's several others, but this is the one that I happen to look at. You can see we completed that ABCD here. We left a little bit of an island here uh, last week. Of course, this past week, we really just bounced back into it. So that is still a bearish pattern unless we get above uh, 44. Whether it does that or not, you know, remains to be seen, but we'll keep a very close eye on it. It was interesting when you were talking to, uh, to Stan, you know, he's bearish on the gold and I'm relatively bullish as long as we can stay above this uh, this 14 uh, 50, uh, 670, which was the low we had yesterday. Going below that low, folks, would be uh, very, very ominous. And the, the reason for that is, you know, we rallied $20, and that's uh, about the maximum you're going to get. That, you know, harmonic number in gold is uh, 17 and 34. 20 is pretty much spot on because it was a fast tick up there. <laughs> there was much trading between uh, 75 and 70, 1475 and 1476. So it's it's extremely important that we don't go below the 14. Uh, 58 level. In fact, today's low should get should not get any lower than 1464. I don't know where gold's trading right now, but we need to pay uh, close attention to it. Uh, Bob's saying that uh, looks like the the bonds look like a low risk short there at that 159 level. You're probably right. You don't have to risk more than about eight ticks on that if you uh, take a look at it. But remember, you've got to use a stop with these things because if you don't, and if you don't, that's where the problems really arise. Because all the, you know, all your all your frustrations in this business come from unfulfilled expectations. That's right out of Tony uh, uh, Robbins's book, and that's why if you don't think that that bond's going to stop at 159 and it goes to 159.02 or 03, you know, you've got a problem. So uh, just remember, protect yourself, keep your losses small, much like what Jim Simmons does. Remember, he's only right about 50% of the time. He keeps his losses small. He lets his profits run just right out of the old textbook. So uh, I think it's important that we remember some of the things from the master. You see that in Tom Hugard's trading also. If you haven't got his book from TraderTom.com, I highly recommend it. It's going into publication, folks, so it's not going to be free for very long. Uh, he's, the publishers have already, uh, in fact, he had several of them trying to publish the big book for him. So it's going to be an interesting uh, book to uh, take a look at. But right now it's free. You just have to go to www.tradertom.com and he'll send it out to you. Just mention that you heard it here at TFNN, Tiger Financial News Network, the home of some really smart dudes in the Tiger Den. As I mentioned, uh, this is really worth mentioning, folks. Tonight between 5 and 6.30 Eastern Time, Mr. Basil Chapman is going to be in the house, and I really recommend. He's got, he makes a great presentation, and I think you'll really – it's very, very enjoyable, folks. I mean, he just covers the whole gamut for an hour and a half, and I think it's something that uh, you would certainly uh, – you know, certainly I'm going to be there, and so I won't be. Well, I'll be listening, but my goodness, it, it's really a, uh, it's really a good show. You don't want to miss it. That that's at five o'clock to 6.30 tonight at www.tfnn. Any other questions that you folks might have, it's 877-927-6648. And now we have a question from Bob about the corn. I haven't forgotten you, Bob. I'm going to get it up here, get that Christmas corn uh, uh, to take a look at it. One second here. That's not corn. Corn starts with a C. There it is. There we get this corn up here. Uh, 
here's what we're looking at. Bob, we got right down to it just the other day, and we've had a nice little bounce here. Not much, of course, but uh, I believe that uh, we, we went below the 372 by just a little bit. We went to 368, which really isn't very much. We're getting a tiny bit of bump today in corn, beans, and wheat, and I believe all it is, Bob, is a uh, minor short covering rally because we have not made the major patterns yet in the bonds, excuse me, the beans, the meal, the oil, or the corn or the wheat. Those patterns look lower. So I'm assuming that because of that, because there's patterns to the downside, that we haven't quite made that yet. So I would be a little patient. In fact, uh, we'll be right back, folks. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have a question from Jeff in New Jersey. Are you there, Jeff? Uh, yes. Hi, Mr. Pezzavento. How are you? What can I do for you, my friend? I'm uh, actually very nervous uh, calling you here late. I feel like I'm calling a rock star. <laughs> hey, I'm a really nice guy. Nothing to be nervous about. You're just not going to be paid for this. You realize that, right? Well, that, that's not what your um, guy says who answered the phone. But I'll, <laughs> I'll ask these questions anyway. Go ahead. So um, these are about the uh, ABCD pattern. Um, 
that um, I, I just finished your chapter in your book, uh, Trade What You See, and I, I just had some questions that I wasn't sure about. Uh, so, so the first question is, um, on the BC leg, do you require that to be uh, greater than or equal to a 382 pullback? Yes, it has, it, to be three, it has to be 382 to be valid, yes. Okay, that actually answers uh, another question I had, which I can skip now. Um, mm -hmm. The second question is, um, do you require a minimum number of bars for the AB leg? Yeah, it has to be at least two or three. You just, well, you, sometimes you'll get that jab down because of a report, but usually you'd like to see two or three, and as, as many as five or eight is even better because that makes it better. But with reports, sometimes, Jeff, you know, the market will slam down there, catch a number like 618 and 786 and go back up. That's why it's important to watch. But, you know, there's no 100% rule, but usually you like to see somewhere between, oh, three and eight bars in the BC swing. Okay, excellent. Thank you. And um, uh, the last question is, at what point in the ABCD pattern do you actually start to trade it? Do you try to catch that last leg, or do you wait till it's over and uh, no, that, uh, trade uh, I, the I, other way? Well, the, the key to me is that AB leg, because if that AB leg is at a, at a slope of around 70 degrees, uh, Tom Hugard has shown me that you want to buy that 382 retracement because that's very, very powerful. So that's the time that I use the 382 only when there's been a really strong thrust. And uh, we saw that uh, in Treasury bonds, you know, when the top was made, you know, he had a snap back and then stopped right at the 382 and then broke. These were great questions, and if you, we have to go now, but if you have some more, give us a call tomorrow, Jeff. Good talking to you, my friend. You too. Thank you. Thank you. 877-927-6648.